Um, hello everyone. So this is my first video of you discussing the next chapter of our lesson, which talks about uh, probability distributions. Okay. So basically there are in a book, there's three chapters on it. So what we're going to do is to start off with uh, the first one, which talks about uh, probability distributions. Okay. So first, our goal will be first to determine between discrete and continuous random variables and to learn how to construct discrete probability distributions. Okay. How, what the graph would look like and how to construct the table form itself, because uh, this uh, probability distributions is more or less the same as that of frequency distributions. The only difference is that we're dealing with probabilities. Okay. Now the next lesson would probably this next two bullets. Okay. That you see. So let's start off with the first one, which is about random variables. Okay. So in any uh, experiment, okay, you are interested in one specific characteristic. Okay. Like say, if you want to determine the number of um, cars that passes through, okay, that would be your variable. Okay, so the variable they usually represented by x, okay, it represents a numerical value, and that numerical value can take on whole number value or decimal values. Like the whole number value, say for example, the number of sales calls a person makes in one day. Okay. So it only takes in whole number values. Or let's say, for example, if you're focusing on the number of hours spent on sales calls. So this can take on decimal values, okay? Which leads us to uh, the definitions of the two types of random variable, which are discrete, okay? That tells you that it has finite or countable number of possible outcomes, just like this one, what I said earlier on, okay? and continuous random variable, okay? Which can take on decimal values, just like this example, okay? So, like say for example, is this discrete or continuous? The number of Fortune 500 companies that lost money in the previous year. So here we're focusing on companies, okay? So companies cannot take in what? Decimal values. So this only takes in exact values, telling us that this is an example of a discrete variable. Okay. Well, the next example, the volume of gasoline in a 21 gallon tank volume can take in again, decimal values. So this is an example of what you call continuous random variable. Okay. Can you follow so far? Okay. So what we're going to be focusing on mostly for now is discrete probability distribution. So discrete probability distribution, it's a probability distribution that is um, list. It's that lists each possible value uh, of a random variable together with its probability. So remember, in our probability problems, we're only focusing on just say one particular case. Okay, like say find the probability that say exactly three people will go. Okay. So find exact, uh, find a probability that exactly two of them are male. Okay. So things like that, that's one specific case. Okay. So what we're going to do is basically to generalize everything. So we're going to say the number of males, it could be zero, one, two, three. Okay. Depending upon what the experiment is. Okay. Also this discrete probability distribution, again, satisfy should satisfy the following conditions, okay? So first and foremost, the probability of each should be between zero and one. And then since you're getting all of the cases together, it must be that the sum of all the probabilities is equal to one, okay? So to construct is basically creating a table so much so, okay? So basically you're making, in some problems, you are making frequency counts, okay? And then getting the percentage from the total, representing the probability, okay? And then make sure that the sum of the percentages or the frequencies is equal to the total, making the probability equal to one, okay? So, example. So in this case where you see, there's an industrial psychologist administered a personality inventory test for a 
passive aggressive traits to 150 employees. So individuals were giving a score from one to five where one was extremely passive and five to be extremely aggressive, okay? So a score of three indicated a neither trait. So what we're gonna do is to construct a probability distribution for the random variable X. Here, then graph the distribution using a histogram, okay? So in this case, our random variable X indicates what? The score, okay? So what is the score for this particular inventory test? Okay, for passive aggressive traits, okay? So that's represent your X. Notice you're given a frequency on the right side, uh, representing the frequency of those who got a one, a got a two, three, four, and five. So basically, if you wanna construct the probability distribution, all you gotta do is just simply create the probability over the total, okay? Since you're talking about 150 people, okay, get the probability of those who got a one, two, three, four, and five. And then these are your probabilities, okay? So you can put them into a table like this, okay? Can everybody follow so far, okay? So this is a valid discrete probability distributions because if you try to look at it, okay, each of the following has a probability that is between zero and one. And the sum of all these probabilities is equal to one, okay? So again, this is a histogram determining the distribution. So more or less, it's kind of like a bit symmetric, okay? So representing the probability on the y-axis and the score on the x-axis, okay? So let's have another example, okay? So let the random variable X be represented the uh, number of people waiting in line at Subway, okay? Let's just say the Subway near our school, okay? And it happens to only take the values two, three, or five with the probabilities two over 10, T over 10, and five over 10. So what we're gonna do is to construct a probability distribution table and the discrete probability density function. I'm gonna discuss this probability density function. That's the PDF, okay? So notice X only represents three values. What are those three values? Two, three, and what? Five, okay? So that represents when it's, since it's respectively given the probability, so when X is two, probability is two over 10. When X is three, probability is three over 10. And when X is five, the probability is five over 10, okay? So again, if you put it into a table, it kind of look like this, okay? Now notice, this can be put into some sort of an equation, okay? So it's kind of like an equation that you can put in that relates the table. So re representing X as the random variable, P of X represents basically Y, okay? So if you try to come up, the equation looks like this, okay? Equation is P of X equals X over 10, but this one only applies for the values to three or five, okay? Notice each of the probability is between zero and one, and the sum of the probabilities is two plus three plus five, which is 10 over 10, which is equal to one, okay? You have any questions, okay? Next example, okay. Student randomly guesses at two questions of a true or false quiz, okay? So let the random variable X is the number of correct guesses, okay? So find the probability distribution of X, okay? So if you try to look at this, there are only two questions, okay? So X is the number of correct guesses. So the possible number of correct guesses that you might have when you try to guess these two questions is that you both get a zero correct guesses, which means what? Both questions should guess it what? Wrong, okay? You can get one of the questions right, okay? Or you can get what? Two correct guesses. So it's basically your X values ranges from what? Zero, one, and what? Two, okay? Now, notice that's in there, okay? So sample space would be something like this, okay? Because you're talking about uh, possible answers for a true for two questions, okay, of a true or false test. So both are wrong, one is wrong, other one is right, correct, or correct, wrong, and then correct and correct, where the W is the wrong guess and C is the correct guess. So 
if I'm have this right, I have now the following. Okay, so when x is zero, one and two. Okay, when x is zero, looking at your sample space, it's gonna be just simply one out of what four. One being what w n w. Okay, when x is one, which means one of them is correct, you have two of those w c and c w. That gives you two out of four. And the last one, which is both correct, c and c, that gives you one over four. So that table that you see is exactly the probability distribution. Okay. Okay, next example. This one is pretty clear, okay? In a college statistics class of 20 students, so the total is 20, so notice that the table, all of them has a denominator of 20, okay? One student is 16 years old, four are 18, nine are 19, three are 20, two are 21, and one is 30. So let x, the random variable, be the age of any student. So the ages ranges from 16 to 30. That's on the table right there and just simply count the frequencies. Okay, it's pretty easy, right? Okay, so next example. Okay, this one, gotta listen, okay? So a fair six-sided die, so this is a die, it's fair, right? That has the following. One, the number one on one of the faces, the number two on two of its faces, so number three on the remaining faces. Okay, now the experiment is to the die is being thrown twice and let the random variable x be the total of the score thrown. Okay, so construct the probability distribution of x. Okay, now let's analyze how this one uh, is um, explained. Okay, so first and foremost, you only have numbers one, two, and three. There's no four, five, and six. So there's, if we try to create a table, we'll not include those numbers. Okay, second. The random variable x is the sum of two numbers when rolled. So which means when you roll these two dice that has those, okay, we get the sum for both the top and the bottom part, right? Okay, so this turns out to be like this on the next example, okay? So if I go to the, I'm going to the configuration of the dice, I'll have now this dice, okay? Tell me that the one on top, so one ones, two twos, and the rest are threes. Same thing here, one ones, two twos, and the rest are threes. And notice that the ones inside are basically the sum when those two numbers are added, okay? So like say, for example, this four is basically two and two and so on, okay? So notice the total is still what? 36, because there's six times six, right? And the possible values of X, since you're talking about the sum, ranges from two and to what? Six. So if I have that, I just simply count how many twos, how many threes, how many fours, how many fives, and how many six will there be? And that gives me this, okay? And that itself is the probability distribution, okay? Can everybody follow? Clear? Okay. Next example, okay. This is the last one, okay? So a team of three is to be chosen from three boys and four girls, okay? So a total of seven persons. If X is the random variable, the number of girls in a team, construct the probability distribution of X, okay? So since the team has to compose of what? Three people, okay? And there are, the possible number of girls could be what? From zero, it could be zero girls, one girl, two girls, or all of them, what, three? Okay, we cannot have four in a team because it's four girls because the team only needs how many people? Three, right? So here, generally, you're gonna be using combinations. It's because all in all, generally, you're choosing three from three boys and four girls, a total of seven people. So the general combination with now possibilities would be the combination of seven taken what? Three. So picking three from seven. Using the calculator, it gives you 35 possibilities, okay? That's going to be the denominator of your table, okay? So all you got to do is to determine the value of x, which is from zero, one, two, and three, right? So let's start. When x is zero, which means no girls, all are boys. So which means for a team of three from the four that are girls, as you can see from here, 
Okay, I'm gonna select no no girls. And from all the boys, three, I'll pick them to three. Okay, so if I multiply them and get the combinations using the calculator, that gives me a one. One, okay? Next, when X is one, which means one girl are there. So from four girls, I'll be picking one. And from three that are girls or boys, I'll pick one, two. Okay, using that combination formula, using the calculator, I get what? 12, okay? And when X is two, you get from four girls, you get two, and from three boys, you get one, because you can only need three. That gives you 18 total. And the last one would be um, all of them are girls. So from the four girls, I get all, I get three. And then from the three that are boys, I get nothing. So these numbers that you see would be the numerators out of what? 35. Notice that if I add all the numbers here, that gives me a total of what? 35. So if I put it into a table, it's going to come up like this. Okay? Do you have any questions? Is this clear? Okay? So where I posted in um, Schoology the work, okay? But if you have any questions, we'll have a Zoom uh, sometime tomorrow, okay? For any questions on the problems.